Thursday and Good Friday. There will be a sunrise worship service that will take place at the cemetery at 6.30 on Easter Sunday. Uh, breakfast will follow. And then an Easter egg hunt at 9.30. Worship will begin at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday. Also in the uh, bulletin, there is a form for geraniums that can be ordered for Memorial Day. And the orders can be placed now through May 8th. And also, you can find that not only in the bulletin, but also in the email list. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grab your poem. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. If you don't have a poem, raise your hand. We can get some to you. Okay, very good. Let's try that two more times just to have it, have it, have it be invoked in a way that, uh, that, that fits with this special day. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, and at the place called the Mount of Olives, he, went, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter into it, You'll find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set, set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people knelt, spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if they were silent, the stones themselves would shout. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that, joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Or I'm sorry. Stand up so we might see.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. So the young and the younger part, make sure you have instruments. So you all up there who are hoping for more people in choir and bell choir and all that, just pay attention to, to who is making some noise. So I have a sermon that was given to me by my supervisor in Baltimore. And he did this for five other interns in addition to me. So he taught six different people how to be a pastor. And Pastor Greg took a, a year's time and taught us how better to be ministers. And the thing he did, one of the things he did was he gave us this sermon for every Palm Passion Sunday. And one of the things he liked to do, because it's an African American congregation, was get to people to call and respond. And so the, the call and response for this particular sermon is the pastor says, the donkey, and everybody else responds, makes all the difference. And to help us out, because we're not all used to that kind of thing, I want the, those with instruments to, every time I say the donkey, make a little noise, just to, to make sure we're all prompted and ready. Okay, so let's give that a try. Instruments at the ready? Okay, the donkey makes all the difference. So you heard that, you heard that noise, let's try one more time there. The donkey makes all the difference. Perfect, okay. So with that, let us pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord God, may the preacher decrease that you might increase. Amen. Amen. Now we start off this amazing day, Palm Sunday, 2,000 some years ago. Yeah. And Jesus is entering, entering into Jerusalem. He is entering from the east, and Pontius Pilate is entering from the West. Now Pontius Pilate, you have to understand, is riding a war horse. Whereas Jesus is riding a donkey. Oh come on, you need to be ready. Jesus is riding a donkey. Yeah, so he's riding this donkey. Makes all the difference. Okay, we're getting there. So he's riding this donkey. Makes all the difference. Whereas Pilate is riding a war horse. He's entering into Jerusalem. He's coming in from his military fort on the sea out there in the west. And he's entering in in order to unlock the essentially a very fancy cabinets where the, the high priest's robes and all their, their various accoutrements that, they're able, that they need to perform their rituals for Passover are locked up. And he does this with a whole cohort of soldiers. So they're all marching into Jerusalem from the west. Ooh, scary stuff. And they're doing this to prove to the, the, the Jews there in Jerusalem, everybody who came in for the great festival of Passover, that they are not in control. But instead, the Romans are in control. Their military might is such that the Jews in Jerusalem can't control their own faith, can't even control their own religious Rituals without Rome's say so. And now this is a tense time. 
Because you have all kinds of people who come into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. So people from all over the world, Jews from all over the world, pouring into Jerusalem. And at the same time, you have these Roman soldiers occupying this country. Powder keg waiting to explode, right? In fact, in fact, you have a story told by Josephus of a Roman soldier, probably 16 years old, doing what Roman soldiers sometimes do. He, he saw all these pilgrim, pilgrims coming in to worship God, and he mooned them. You know what happened? A riot ensued, and thousands died. This back and forth, this powder keg about to explode, with this war horse coming in to show who's in control. But Jesus, remember Jesus? He doesn't come on a war horse, he comes on a donkey. Yes, the donkey makes all the difference. So he comes in in a different kind of way than the Romans. But also, I think he comes in a different way than what his own disciples and those along the road celebrating, shouting, Hosanna, expect. You see, first of all, these palm branches have a particular meaning that these are woven together into tents onto the sides of them hanging out. On the day of Sukkot, when they celebrate that Moses and the people have arrived in the land, the promised land, they're saved. Right? So, so that's saying, oh, we're going to be saved. In fact, when we shout Hosanna, Hosanna itself means save us. Save us. That's what we're shouting. Did you know that? So they're shouting to Jesus, save us. And they're, they're, they're having these poems that are representing a time when the promised land is there. They've arrived. They're able to celebrate the feast from the land instead of icky manna that they've had for the last 40 years. So they're celebrating. They're expecting they're expecting some sort of salvation. But if you think about the people who are following Jesus, you have, for example, Simon the Zealot. So zealots are people that believe the way that you can be a good Jew is to militarily kick out the Romans. For that matter, Judas Iscarot, Iscariot, literally is a Sicari, a knife man. So somebody who's there assassinating Roman soldiers. So you can imagine when, when some of these folk are shouting, save us, save us. They have a very particular understanding of what that kind of salvation will be. And Jesus, Jesus is going to perhaps disappoint them, those who are looking for that kind of salvation. Because he's riding a donkey, and the donkey is a donkey. Now, now, as I said, I've, I've been preaching this sermon now for 11 years, I guess. And th this was the first time I had an aha. So one of the things, because it's hard to think about what kind of salvation we're getting here with Jesus. And I know, of course, that Pastor Greg was wanting us to understand theology of the cross, the idea that God shows up in the last place we would think to look. <coughs> but what I hadn't thought about was the kind of salvation that Jesus is offering up is the kind of salvation we find in Psalm, not Psalm, Isaiah 42. Now, the interesting thing is, unfortunately, we as a denomination, we as a church, have a lectionary that reads through a whole lot of scripture each year, right? In fact, in three years, we're supposed to hit upon all the big things, except the only time we read Isaiah 42, particularly 
So it's a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Right? So that's the kind of salvation that the early church is imagining by the time they're on the other side of things and looking back to Scripture. Say, oh, the kind of salvation Jesus is doing, the kind of way God is saving us in Jesus Christ, is a way that won't snap a reed. Right? That gentle that won't break a reed. That gentle that it will not breathe on a candle and it will go out. That's the kind of salvation that Jesus offers to us. You know, sometimes we ask, oh, how long, O Lord? Well, it takes a little longer when you're saving people gently, right? Because Jesus is, is not on a war horse. Jesus is not killing Romans. Instead, Jesus is riding a, on a donkey, and a donkey makes all the difference. And think about it. This is the story of Jesus. Oh, sorry, I didn't tell you. The thing that's bizarre about Isaiah 42 is the only time we read it is on East on Holy Monday. So tomorrow, because we're all, we're all in worship tomorrow morning, right? <laughs> and we're all reading it, yeah, right? So we don't really get a chance to read this important passage of Scripture that's describing what Jesus is up to the kind of salvation he offers, this kind of salvation that's gentle, that will not break things, but instead save and fix and mend. That's the kind of salvation offered to us in Jesus Christ. And this donkey thing, because the donkey is, is something Jesus has been up to from the beginning. Think about it. Mary, not some princess, but a lowly peasant girl. Shepherds and foreign astrologers are the people that initially point to Jesus. Look, there is King Jesus. Right? That's a different kind of thing, a different kind of people. It's not this grand thing, but instead a gentle thing we can hold on to. For that matter, Jesus is born in the manger, not in the castle. His disciples are, you know, in some ways, duh disciples, especially if you read Luke's, or pardon me, especially if you read Mark's gospel. They, they are not the, the high and mighty religious scholars. They're just folk trying to figure out what this Jesus is up to and chasing after, trying to keep up with what he is up to. For that matter, when, when the, the, the crowd attempts to make Jesus king, he runs away, right? He, he, he escapes, for that matter. When he is finally crowned, he's crowned with a crown of thorns, not a crown of gold. He, his throne is not a, a beautiful thing in some imperial palace, but instead the cross itself. Because you see, that's the kind of salvation on offer in the person of Jesus Christ. That is our faith. That's the kind of salvation we're sat we find when we say, save us, save us, Lord Jesus. It's a gentle, loving salvation. It's the kind of salvation you'd expect from somebody who is riding a donkey. It makes all the difference. The donkey makes all the difference in our understanding of who Jesus Christ is. And we can thank God for that. And now let us again lift up these palms and let us sing let us sing the palms
You are those who have stood with me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to the prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he who was counted among the lawless, indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel came from heaven and appeared to him, Gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed the more earnestly, and his sweat became like giant drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came and the one called Judas one of the twelve was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers, 
officers of the temple police and the elders who had come for him. Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was, Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then the servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also is with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You are also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and went to the Lord. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of God will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. But when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad for he had been wanting to see him for a long time. Because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign, he questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, but he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found him in no ground for the sentence of death. 
I will therefore have them flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with them. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved us others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanging there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And then all the crowds who were gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place. They returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him into Galilee, from Galilee, stood at a distance watching their, these things. Now there is a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to the plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The woman who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spice and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 